Hey guys, welcome back. This is The Glimpse Inside. My name is Chris and on today's episode, we are gonna make some storage solutions for our living room. Under the couch, there is a dead space. So I'm gonna make a couple little devices here that are gonna go underneath them for storage because this little one, right, along with her two brothers, have a lot of things and they get all over the place. So we're gonna find a way to store them in the living room, out of sight. Come with us, see how we did it. Let's go. All right guys, this project starts out by ripping some four inch pieces on the table saw here. I will say this, you can make this whole project out of one by fours and a piece of plywood you can get from your local big box store. And all you really need is a circular saw and a speed square to get it done. At this point, I'm doing a little pre-sanding up to 220 grit before I assemble these pieces. I think sanding beforehand, especially when you have right angles involved, is a much better process than trying to sand it when it's all finished and completed. I do want to say this, you're going to see me build one of these. I, I'm actually going to build two because I need to for my situation. But I hope this project inspires you to think outside the box. And you know what? You can figure out any type of organization solution in your home with the simplest of materials. And this is how we did it in ours. The glue and the brads are probably strong enough to hold this thing together. However, I'm not taking any chances. I'm going to countersink two holes in each joint and drill in some inch and a quarter screws. Now I make my way to the table saw again to cut down some pieces that are gonna be the basis for each of these units. This is made from Baltic Birch plywood, one quarter of an inch in thickness, and it fits pretty well. I cut it a little bit oversized, and before I flush trim it with a router, again, I like to do some pre-sanding as well, just to make things easier down the road. No screws necessary here. I'm just gonna use glue and brads, quite a bit of brads as well, and there's enough surface area here for the glue to be just as strong as I'm ever gonna need it. Now, as you can see here, there's an eighth inch overhang around the whole piece. So I'm using a flush trim bit on my router to go ahead and take care of that. This puts a nice edge along the entire piece. Now it's time to break all the edges with 220 grit sandpaper. This goes pretty quickly. And now it's time to go ahead and prep to apply some stain. Man, that is a handsome paper cutter. Hmm, wonder where I got it. Once the paper's down, I lay down these four bench cookies to kind of raise the piece up and also give me a nice non-slip surface to work on. I'm applying a dark stain. This is just a walnut stain from Minwax. I'm using a foam brush to do so. And I want to point out this technique that I found is whenever I'm staining anything, I typically go forward with the foam brush, not backwards. I find that this technique, I know I've mentioned it before in another video, but it really does a nice even coat. Now, there's also another way to stain. This is the second unit, and I'm simply just using an old t-shirt dipped in the stain as well, and I'm going over it with my hand and making sure there's no streaks, no nothing, and we're good to go. As I'm finishing putting the stain on, I like to go over it once, come back with a re-soaked rag, and go over it again. The stain has dried for 24 hours, and now it's time to apply. Ah, hey you, what's up? What you doing, girl? Now it's time to apply some polyurethane. This polyurethane I'm using is specially formulated for flooring, meaning I suppose it's more durable than your other polyurethanes, I don't know. Either way, I've used it a lot and I love it and it works great. Uh, Minwax makes it, again, they're not a sponsor or anything, but I just like their products. So anyway, applying this with a foam brush, I'm only gonna do one or two coats here and I'm gonna sand it in between each coat with a, you guessed it, a Scotch-Brite pad. These things are great. This is great for in between finishing as well. After that's done, I'm gonna take some mineral spirits and clean up all the dust and as it turns out, all I needed was one coat. So on to putting on the hardware. Now, I put a scrap piece behind where I'm gonna drill. I've made some marks where the hardware is gonna receive the screws and go ahead and get to work. This backer board is a lifesaver. You will have blowout no matter what you do if you do not protect the back of this piece. So now it's time to give it the old college try, see if it fits, see if my measurements were accurate. I go ahead and screw these machine screws in the back of this piece and it looks like it fits pretty well. I attach the nuts and there is some overhang. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a pencil, I'm gonna make some marks on the screws and I'm gonna cut them to the right size. After clamping the piece of hardware into the vise, I use my angle grinder to cut along where I drew those marks. I re-thread the nuts back up to make sure that the threads don't get damaged and just in case, I'm gonna take some sandpaper here and really clean up the edges of these. Chuck them in the drill, should have no problems. Everything looks like it fits well, nice and flush. Such a beautiful day today. Hear those birds? No kidding, man, they were singing like crazy. So I take some felt pads, put eight of them down on the base, and here we go. 
testing it out. Looks like it fits pretty well. Now it's time to load it up. Now we have three kids, two of them are in diapers still. And of course I'm using blankets and storage for stuffed animals and this, that, and the other, but you could use this for whatever you want to get things out of the sight, out of mind. What's up Yoshi? And this is gonna be great for our family. I'm really glad I made this, well overdue. And there it is, completely tucked away. Hey guys, thank you so much for joining us for this one. This was an absolute necessity for us. We had to get some of the stuff out of the way and I thank you for joining us for this build. Again, this is a simple project. You don't need a table saw. You can do this with one by fours and pre-cut plywood from the Home Depot or Lowe's or whatever big box store you choose. Uh, guys, thank you so much for watching. Also, I ask, I don't ask this very much of this channel, but um, if you like this and found it useful, um, please share it. Share it on either social media that you use, whether it's Twitter, Facebook, you name it. It doesn't matter. It would mean a great deal to us. So again, always, there's videos over here to watch. If you want to watch something else, again, we always invite you to subscribe over there, right there. <laughs> and thanks again for watching, guys. My name is Chris. This has been Glimpse Inside, and we'll see you next time. Bye. Say bye. <laughs>